and I tried to do one about four years ago, but unfortunately it didn't work, but everything happens for a reason. Um, we decided to put the fan mail project out and to wait until after that to do the solo album. It was meant to be the moment when hip hop's most misunderstood woman could finally tell her story and inspire her audience. Instead, the album's release was cancelled and within months she was gone. If you enjoy hearing stories about eras gone by, hit the subscribe button to be notified when I next upload. Now, back to the video. The project, which was originally called FantasyOne.com and A New Star Is Born Before Being Changed to Supernova, was an important album for Lisa for several reasons, both personal and professional. It represented a chance for her to step out of the shadow of TLC and establish her own identity as a solo artist. It can often be difficult for artists in a group to fully showcase both their personality and breadth of their talent when part of a cohesive unit, and Lisa was keen to show everybody that she was more than a 16-bar rapper. Supernova was a deeply personal project that allowed her to express herself without the creative constraints she sometimes felt within the group. While TLC was a collaborative effort where her voice had to blend with t boz and Chili, Supernova was all her own. The album gave her the freedom to delve into themes that were meaningful to her, such as spirituality, reincarnation, life, death and personal growth, reflecting her interests in astrology, numerology and the metaphysical. This album was a way for her to communicate her beliefs and share her personal journey with the world. Throughout her career, Left Eye was often portrayed as the wild or rebellious member of the group, especially after her widely publicised legal troubles and tumultuous relationships. Supernova was her chance to reclaim her narrative and present herself as a multidimensional artist and thinker rather than just the crazy persona she was often labelled with in the media. She wanted to show her depth, vulnerability and maturity, and this album was her platform to do so. I grew up in a home where there were so many restrictions that by the time I got on the street, I was just, I didn't know what to do with myself, you know, and I don't know, I just, I was, I, I was drinking, so that fueled a lot of situations, and I, and one day I just woke up and said, oh, I can't take this anymore, <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I gotta find me. So that's what I had been searching for. And now that I have found me, the same me that I used to, um, that I remembered from being a child, you know, I feel a, a, a sense of peace and, and I like the way it feels. The release date of Supernova was carefully chosen to honor her family's legacy. It fell on the anniversary of her grandfather's death and would have been her father's birthday had he not passed a decade earlier. The album is filled with personal reflections, including the track A New Star Is Born, which is a tribute to her late father. This made the album a form of emotional catharsis for Lisa. Something weird happened in my family. My father, my, I, this is a little confusing, my father, died on August 16th and his father was born on August 16th. And then on January 31st is the day that his father was born and he died. So they came in and out of each other's dates and they were both 40 when they died. That's just one of those things that has, you know, it's been sitting in the back of my mind for a couple of years now, like, wow, I wonder what that means. But anyway, the 16th is one of those dates and it's a very significant release date, you know. Lopez wanted to use the project to empower and inspire her fans, especially young women who may have felt misunderstood or confined by society's expectations. She aimed to promote messages of self-discovery, spirituality and independence, encouraging listeners to find their true selves and embrace their unique paths. The album's title, Supernova, itself suggests a powerful transformation, a star exploding into a new state of being, mirroring the message she hoped to convey. I um, named the album Supernova because the supernova is it's a rare star 
and it increases its normal shine up to a billion times in brightness. So when I was recording this album, you know, it's very important to me that I reach as many people as I can through my music and through love and through healing. You know, so I want that same energy that I have and the same love that I put into my record to bleed from the CD and out of your speakers and into your system, you know. So when I recorded every song on the album, you know, no matter what I was talking about, whether it be a party track or a relationship track or, or just questioning our existence, I tried to do things from a very positive point of view. If all you knew about Lisa came solely from Supernova, you'd be amazed by the range of her talent, the scope of her ambition, and the depth of her seemingly endless empathy. Yet it's unlikely you would have discovered the album without prior knowledge of her, which was both her greatest asset and a challenge that no single album could truly overcome. A string of massive hits with TLC, the group that became the best-selling all-female band in music history, had set high and narrowly defined expectations for her musically. Meanwhile, nearly a decade of front-page headlines had provided plenty of material for lyrics as introspective and soul-revealing as anything in pop at that time but it also meant she was one of the most controversial and misunderstood pop stars of the early 21st century. As expected due to the album being very personal to Lisa, she took a very active role in the writing, penning 10 out of the 14 tracks on the project. She also worked alongside some well-known names in the business, including Salam Raimi, who produced the debut single, The Block Party. The album also contained some featured artists including Cassandra Lucas, who was one half of the 90s R&B group Changing Faces. Black were also featured on a song as they prepared for the release of their own sophomore album. Canadian singer Estero brought some diversity and introspection to the song called The Universal Quest, and R&B singer Carl Thomas on the opening track, Life is Like a Park. Lisa also had a feature from her friend Tupac, who she had known prior to his passing in 1996. Supernova is a genre-blending album that reflects her diverse musical influences and her desire to push creative boundaries beyond the confines of her work with TLC. At the dawn of the millennium, genres were being fused together to create a more diverse listening experience and this album was no different, combining elements of hip-hop, R&B, reggae, pop and funk, creating a sound that is eclectic and experimental. The project's eclectic approach blends a variety of musical styles to create a distinct sonic palette that reflects Left Eye's multifaceted personality and creative ambitions. The album moves from upbeat, party-ready tracks to introspective and spiritual explorations, showcasing her ability to balance light-hearted fun with serious, thought-provoking content. The production often juxtaposes polished, mainstream sounds with raw, experimental elements which makes the album feel both familiar and refreshingly unique. This blend of styles really showcases Left Eye's versatility as an artist and allows her to shine. I have the free reins to do a little bit more than I could do with TLC in a few different areas, um, creatively, conceptually, lyrically. And that's, that's what's more important to me because there are a lot of things that I would like to re relay to people. A lot of things that I would like to get off of my chest. Supernova still feels fresh and forward thinking. On the album, Lopez focuses more on envisioning the future of the multiple genres she explores than on conforming to the trends of the time. Critics who were disappointed that she didn't follow the paths being paved by Missy Elliott or the Neptunes, who were seen as defining the future of rap and R&B, may have missed the point of her unique vision. Some of the things that I put in the block party were actually from other people's experiences, but I just tried to put things in the songs that the majority of people could relate to, you know, because I wasn't allowed to go on the block, <laughs> you know, as, as often as a lot of my friends did. But, um, you know, I, I think that um, I was just trying to reach a spot in everyone's heart where they could just reminisce about times that they had fun. The Block Party was released in July 2001 as the album's lead single. It was intended to set the tone for the album and introduce fans to Left Eye as a solo artist. Produced by Salam Remy, the song incorporates a mix of hip-hop and reggae, with a playful and upbeat feel that reflects a festive, carefree vibe. 
The use of reggae-inspired rhythms and bass lines gives the track a distinct sound that stands out from typical early 2000 hip-hop. Lyrically, the song is a light-hearted and fun track that invites listeners to join a neighbourhood celebration. Left Eye's verses are filled with witty rhymes and clever wordplay, delivered in her signature rapid-fire style. The lyrics capture a sense of community, joy and nostalgia, reflecting her own experiences and memories of growing up. The song's primary theme revolves around community, togetherness and having fun, which aligns with Left Eye's desire to promote positivity and unity through her music. It contrasts with some of the more introspective and spiritual themes found elsewhere on Supernova. The music video complements the song's upbeat and celebratory vibe. It features Left Eye hosting a vibrant, animated neighbourhood party, complete with dancing, colourful outfits and lively street scenes. The video is playful and filled with quirky, cartoonish elements that give it a whimsical feel. The video was directed by Hype Williams, a well-known music video director famous for his visually innovative and often surreal style, which was a staple of hip-hop and R&B music videos in the late 90s and early 2000s. Both the song and the video remain a key example of Left Eye's willingness to experiment and blend different musical genres. It showcased her ability to create a distinct sound that stood apart from her work with TLC, highlighting her potential as a solo artist. The track received mixed reviews from critics. While some praised its infectious beat and Left Eye's charismatic delivery, others felt it didn't align with the more futuristic soundscape expected from her solo debut especially following the groundbreaking production styles of artists like Missy Elliott, Swiss Beats and The Neptunes. However, fans appreciated the song's fun, carefree nature and Left Eye's signature lyrical style. Despite its catchy hook and unique blend of styles, the block party did not achieve significant commercial success in the US. Due to the lack of promotion by Arista, the track failed to chart on the Billboard Hot 100. Internationally, the song was promoted more, and the song peaked at number 16 on the UK singles chart, but failed to make a substantial impact on other major music charts. The second single from the album was said to have been the Rock Wilder produced track Hot, however due to the poor performance of the debut single and a lack of promotional push, both Hot and Supernova's release in the US was eventually cancelled. The album was released internationally in the UK, Australia, Japan and China, but was never officially released in the US. This was a time before streaming music was available, so the lack of a US release greatly affected its visibility and sales. This decision was heavily influenced by the label's unwillingness to invest further in promoting an album they felt was not performing up to expectations. Supernova was released under Arista Records in collaboration with Left Eye Productions. Many people have pointed to the label's situation at the time, which may have played a significant role in the album's commercial performance and eventual cancellation. Arista Records was going through a period of transition around the time of Supernova's release in 2001. The label's legendary founder, Clive Davis, was forced out in 2000, and the company was in a state of flux as it underwent restructuring. Under L.A. Reid's leadership, Arista Records found success with newer artists like Avril Lavigne and Pink, but faced challenges with releases from its more established acts. Reid appeared to lose focus and made several missteps in promoting long-standing Arista artists like Tony Braxton and Whitney Houston. The label's direction and priorities were shifting, affecting the promotion and support for many artists, including Left Eye. The label's instability resulted in a lack of cohesive marketing and promotional support for Supernova. While Left Eye was a well-known member of TLC, there seemed to be confusion or hesitation about how to market her as a solo artist. The promotional campaign for the lead single, The Block Party, was not robust, and the album was released in some territories without the level of support expected for an artist of her stature. L.A. Reid who was the head of Arista Records during the time TLC was working on their album Fanmail, was reportedly frustrated and concerned with Lopez's initial reluctance to fully participate in the project. Left Eye's resistance stemmed from creative differences and her desire to explore her own artistic path. She was eager to work on her solo material and felt constrained by the creative direction of TLC at the time. After the cancellation of the album, 
Lisa did not let this setback deter her from continuing her artistic and personal endeavours. She embarked on a series of new projects that reflected her diverse interests and commitment to expanding her creative horizons. In 2002, she made a bold move by signing with Death Row Records, which was later rebranded as The Row. Under this new alias Nina, which stood for New Identity Not Applicable, she began working on a second solo album that was expected to have a harder, more hip-hop-oriented sound than Supernova. Unfortunately, the album under Death Row, tentatively titled Nina, was never completed or released due to her untimely death. However, her signing with Death Row signalled her intention to delve deeper into hip-hop and distance herself from the pop and R&B expectations that surrounded her as a member of TLC. Left Eye even appeared on 106 and Park, alongside Founder Knight as well as Ray J to promote her new alter ego. However, this interview left some fans confused and concerned for the singer's well-being due to her demeanour, which was a stark contrast from the upbeat and positive Lisa fans were used to. I was going to ask Nina, because a lot of people are watching, if you want to explain, Nina is on the row. And is there still a left eye? Left eye is in TLC. Anything outside of left eye, outside of TLC, mm -hmm. would be Nina. Okay. That's right. it. And, and how did Ray J come into the picture of the Row Records? Is he in the picture for the Row? Huh? And, and Nina, what made you decide to work with the Row? Actually, the Row found me. Okay. <laughs> So I feel comfortable over here. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is a family, mm -hmm. you know. There's a lot of love here, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you know, I don't know about the past because I wasn't there, but I'm here now, and I hope that the vibe that I bring to the road, mm -hmm. you know, is a peaceful vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Okay. We wish both of y'all luck. Definitely. Left Eye remained active in the studio, recording tracks with other artists. She featured on Donnell Jones's smash hit, You Know What's Up, which ended up becoming the last number one song to top the Billboard chart of the last millennium and the first number one single of the new millennium. Left Eye also worked with Mel C from the Spice Girls on Never Be The Same Again, showcasing her versatility and widespread appeal. Despite pursuing solo projects, Left Eye remained involved with TLC. She contributed to the group's fourth album, 3D, which began production in 2001. Although her time was divided between her solo work and TLC, she recorded verses on four tracks for the group's fourth album. Lisa spent significant time in Honduras, where she felt spiritually connected and found solace away from the pressures of fame. She frequently visited a healing village in Honduras, founded by the renowned herbalist Dr. Sebi, to rejuvenate spiritually, mentally and physically. The legacy of Supernova is complex and nuanced, shaped by its bold experimentation, introspective themes, and its reflection of Lopez's personal journey and artistic ambitions. Although the album did not achieve commercial success upon its release and was even cancelled in the US, it has since grown in recognition and appreciation, particularly for its impact on female hip-hop and the broader music landscape. The project was a daring departure from the mainstream hip-hop and R&B sound of the early 2000s. Left Eye chose to chart her own course. The album exemplified Left Eye's quest for artistic independence. It was clear that she wanted to carve out her own identity separate from TLC and be recognised for her unique voice. This move has inspired future generations in female hip-hop to take control of their creative output, assert their individuality, and push boundaries without fear of being typecast or limited by their group affiliations or past successes. The album is timeless due to its broad musical palette and could easily blend in sonically, lyrically and aesthetically with the hip-hop of today. Whilst Lisa's life was tragically cut short, it was clear that she has left her mark on the hip-hop landscape. However, in order to fully appreciate why Lisa wanted to make her own album away from TLC, we need to go back further to understand the events that led up to Supernova. Trust me, you can sell 10 million albums and be broke if you have greedy people behind you. All right, this is how a group can sell 10 million records and be broke. And everyone, get ready to do your math. 
When we first started out, we were kind of cocky. Okay, there are 100 points on the album. TLC had seven. Every point is equal to eight cents. All right? Seven times eight, 56 cents. But as time went on, we learned a lot. That means every time an album gets sold, TLC gets 56 cents. So 10 million records, $5.6 million. Seems like a lot of money. Well, it's not a lot of money when the record company has spent $3 million to record your album. And in the record business, we pay all costs back to the record company. We pay recording costs, video costs. So now we have $2.6 million left. Well, guess what? When you have that much money, you're in about the 47, 48.49% tax bracket. So that immediately gets deducted to $1.3 million. Then you split the rest three ways. You got about $300,000 a piece, if that much, okay? $300,000. I can buy a nice house with that. And what am I going to pay my bills with? In TLC, left eye. She yeah. okay? She's not, well, don't get mad, but. What's wrong? She don't feel good. She doesn't feel she doesn't good. Feel okay. Um, all I have to say is Emodium AD put it together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't believe you just said that.